and welcome back to It's Just My Opinion. Sorry I haven't been around for a while. I've been dealing with some personal stuff at home and trying to write out a whole bunch of stuff that I'll have for other videos that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to branch out a little bit, do a whole bunch of different stuff. So you'll see a whole bunch of different videos coming out, not just these. But I wanted to get back on the horse with this. And in the meantime, I have been listening to a lot of albums, some of which that you've suggested. So let's get started with Accept's new album, Stalingrad. A lot of great albums come out in 2010, but I've told everyone my favorite album of 2010 was Accept's Blood of the Nations. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. I was blown away by how catchy and heavy it was, and the replay value was unbelievable. And I still think the Teutonic Terror is one of my favorite driving songs of all time. And this album is great. Now, a lot of people think that Udo is a Udo was the best singer for Accept, so they don't like the new guy. I think he brings a lot of energy to the new material that I think Udo possibly couldn't have done. And I think the new album captures even more of that essence than Blood of the Nations did. But I think that while Blood of the Nations was more memorable, that Stalingrad is more trying to make a point. And that point is that this is what the new Accept is going to sound like. This is how the new material is going to go forward. And honestly, I really like it. It doesn't have the same replay value that Blood of the Nations did, but it has a lot of talent and a lot of drive. More so that is reminiscent of previous Accept albums than Blood of the Nations was. So I think, you know what, I should probably stop just comparing it to the old ones and just say, on its own, it's great. I love all the songs. Hung, Drawn, and Quartered is an amazing song. And uh, the title track, Stalingrad, is great, too. So check this one out. It's really good. Even if you're a, an iffy fan of Except with Udo not being in the band anymore, put those misconceptions aside, because they can give you some good stuff. All right, next up is God Forbid. And although I'll say that I didn't really find Earthblood to be that interesting, Constitution of Treason and Gone Forever are two of my favorite albums of all time. Plus, my very first show that I ever went to was in my hometown, headlined by God Forbid, and it ruled. Therefore, I am more than willing to give these guys a second chance, so let's see how they did with the new album, Equilibrium. I am the architect, we build these rooms, something for nothing again and again, this is unstoppable. The last album had a lot of the energy and power that I love from these guys, but honestly, none of the heart. I feel like it didn't really have that much to it, and it was kind of phoned in. This one has everything I was looking for. It has a lot of the melodic elements that I loved from their work from 2006, and although I love it when they get down and dirty, especially in their earlier albums, uh, like Determination, uh, when they were just more hardcore than metalcore or whatever core. I hate labels like that. I hate having to categorize everything piece by piece. I like just saying, it's metal and it's good. But um, a lot of people will probably be put off by the reason why I liked it, which is that there's a lot more clean singing in this. And for those of you who haven't heard any stuff between Gone Forever and this current album, it's going to be kind of a shock, because they did kind of get more melodic as the albums progressed. Um, but it takes a lot for me to hate a band for singing too much on an album. And in my opinion, it's all for the better. The songs are incredibly well constructed. They're a lot more meaningful with the singing involved. And it's not as heavy if you include more clean singing, a lot of people will say. I think it really just makes the album better. I think that if you just kept it as the way it was with just growling, it really just keeps it as a one note, a one note, a one trick pony. I think this shows a lot more creative juice. I think this shows a lot more melody and more, you know, it's just better, I think. There's really no other way I can put it. I just think it's better when there's more variety and this album has a lot of it so this is definitely worth listening to all right in case it's not obvious um i'm a pretty big metalocalypse fan um i was never a fan of home movies but i love h john benjamin archer is one of my favorite shows of all time and i love brendan small and i love both of them as voice actors but now that brendan small has a successful show that's based around heavy metal i find nothing but good things to say about the guy uh, but his first departure from Death Clock, by the way, kind of fun fact here, did you know that the highest selling death metal albums in America are both the Death Album and the Death Album 2? That says a lot. But anyway, uh, Brendan Small's first departure from his Metalocalypse sound is one that he described as a space rock opera, which is epic. So let's see if he lived up to the hype. 
Here is Brendan Smalls in the last one. Now, if you're looking for death metal sound from this album, you're going to be sadly disappointed. However, if you go into it with no expectations, which I think is what he was originally going for, this is very interesting. It sounds like a weird mix of, like, new metal, power metal, industrial, and classic sounds in a way that, honestly, I can never say that I've heard from a band before. Uh, it obviously shows a lot of range on Small's parts, more so than in the Death Clock albums where he had Pickles sing, which were, honestly, some of my favorites on the album. Uh, but... There's still a lot of influence from the Death Clock-ish sound, and I'm pretty sure Gene Hoagland did the drums for this, too. But the best parts are the ones that stray so far away you have no idea what to think about them and what to make of them. Uh, so I'd definitely say give this a listen. I know that this is streaming online, but I bought a copy of this, and you should, too. Support this guy. Give him more money, because Death Clock needs at least five or six more seasons. And that's all I got time for this hey! this week. Uh, be sure to leave suggest- Hey, bro! Suggestions, leave a comment and tell me what- Hello? What?! Yo, what about that request Miss Rakataka put in, like, a month ago? Leprous? I mean, I, I kind of mentioned it for, like, two seconds in one of the earlier reviews, but- She commented on the Facebook page, bro. She's a fan. I know, and I appreciate that, but it's past my cutoff time. I want to stick to things that are in the three-month scheme that I have here. I want to stick to my principles. You have principles? You know what? Fine. Fine. I'll review it. Aren't you supposed to be working on your spin-off show? Aren't you supposed to be working on that review you promised to do like a month ago? I recorded it last night. I'm editing it now. Get back to your script. All right, fine, fine. You're lazy. You're fictional. So yeah, I gave Leprous a listen, and here's what I got out of it. I wasn't lying when I said that this was weird, and the most I could describe this is it's like a throwback to the 90s. If I was trying to give it an analogy for one band, it would be the most I was reminded of is Mastodon here. But I actually felt like there were so many elements of grunge mixed into this. I know that sounds really weird, but if you give this a listen and then listen to Alice in Chains or Soundgarden or stuff like that, a lot of the sections are really similar. It, it's kind of like a grungy version of Opeth. In terms of replayability, I wasn't totally fascinated with it. I, uh, I felt like it just didn't bring a lot to the table. I felt like there was some little things missing from it. Almost every song felt like it was missing a major part. And I don't know whether it was because it felt too soft, if it felt too slow, if it was, if the vocals were a little mismatched, but all in all, it just didn't really feel very complete. And that's the only thing that really took me out of it. It was the biggest problem I had with it. So if you want to check it out, I'm not going to stop you, but I'll stick to the other ones I've been mentioning this week. Plus, I've been kind of focusing on some high-pitched guys from Canada, so... Should probably get that taken care of. But until next week, leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to see me review. And if you disagree with me on anything I say, you're wrong. All right, I'm kidding. It's, it's totally just my opinion. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge fan of MST3K and riff tracks and stuff like that. And while I was up at Oneonta, me and my friend Cooper actually recorded a riff tracks for an old 1940s PSA. It is actually at the link below I left in the description, so check it out. Give the guy's channel some views. He's got some great stuff. And uh, check out the riff tracks. We'll be making some more of them soon.